Hey everybody, this is Joseph Christ. And I'm Bob Webb. And we're from 4Player Podcast, and this is the Audible Impressions for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Uh, so Bob, so you actually haven't really played much Counter-Strike in your uh, lifetime. No, no. Well, I played uh, back in... God, what, when was that? It was 1990... I want to say 8 or 9 when uh, Half-Life 2 came out. And now we're going to miss uh, 99 or some, somewhere around there. That would blend the, uh, I played the original Counter-Strike. You mean Half-Life 1? Yeah, that's... Yeah, not, not 2. Not 2. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the only one I think of because that's the last one we had for a decade. Yeah, so that's was the first one in your Right, mind. exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, I played um, probably... God, maybe 30 minutes of the original Counter-Strike mod back uh, back when it was in, in its heyday, mm-hmm. which I guess probably would be like, you know really 2000s. But it's yeah. yeah, that's about as much Counter-Strike experience as I had previous to this. Right, right. And I I played a lot of Counter-Strike both for the original Half-Life and then Counter-Strike Source when that was released. So I, I played a lot, and then not a lot of it for a long time. I haven't really touched the game. Uh, so playing this version of it on the console, I, I got it for the console, and you got it for the PC. Yeah, I got it on Steam. Uh, yeah, I I just kind of wanted to feel what it would be like, you know, playing this game on my couch. And and a lot of people don't realize it, but Counter Strike has been on consoles before. They released a version for the original Xbox, uh, way back for the Xbox One. So this isn't the first time we're seeing Counter Strike on consoles. Uh, but what what did you think after uh, with your little very little Counter Strike experience? Uh, well, it took a little bit to get in there um, again, but it's basically from my experience with the original Counter Strike. This one's almost exactly the same. Yeah. There's like yeah. there was very few differences I could actually tell, other than the other being graphics updates and maybe different guns. I really don't know. I didn't play it too much back then. Yeah. There's there's really a, a core foundation to Counter Strike gameplay that you really can't mess with too much. Yeah. It seems they they stuck stuck very closely to the original formula. Yeah. And for people who haven't played Counter Strike before, and I think you know this is going to pull in a lot of probably new new players who. I played maybe Battlefield 3 and Call of Duty. It's it's a whole different ball game. Uh, I mean, it's you know, there is no iron sights. There's there's no aiming down the sights. It's all done by crouching, which which has the effect of slowing the game down. Yeah. So people usually don't really run and gun too much in this game. And you can't because your 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 accuracy just goes to goes to hell. Um, and it's you know a heavy heavy objective based game you know so you have the hostages and you have the planting of the bombs and i i was afraid that when i first got into these games people would be playing it wrong yeah you know because you know people still find it difficult to you know support their teammates in battlefield 3 and do objectives and here's a heavily objective based game uh but i was pleasantly surprised like people were actually know what they're doing and maybe that's just you know a boon to the gamer community that people are approaching it correctly or just a lot more people are familiar with counter-strike uh at this point than maybe i was i was suspecting i know the pc community has always been strong behind it but uh to see console people kind of going in and, and playing the game right uh, made me feel good. Well, also, it made me think like the, the specifically with the types of gameplays that the uh, game types that they have for Counter Strike, they're very simple. They're incredibly simple. It's you know go yeah. get hostages, get out, or right. go and don't let these guys get the hostages, or go plant this bomb, or don't let the guys plant plant this bomb. Yeah. And there mm-hmm. are kind of like a waypoint system that allows you to like on the, there's a mini map that kind of shows where your objectives are. And as well as you know where people are and and possibly like last spotted enemies, um, but it's you know, it's incredibly simple, incredibly stream streamlined. So people who may have balked at kind of a the crazier, more complex, uh, objective-based multiplayer um, games like you know there was some crazy capture and hold, and we need to move forward, and then we need to go like capture this point, and then we need to set this thing up, and that more complex objectives where they just devolved into I'm gonna shoot this dude and run ahead. And just right. try to get my kill count all the way up. Doesn't matter if we win. I just want to kill as many people as possible. So mm-hmm. that, just I think that bar is much lower for follow, following the objectives in, in Counter Strike than it is in those other games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, there's a lot of like smart gameplay decisions that were made here. And, and saying that about Counter Strike is, is is almost as a redundancy to it because Counter Strike is, is just designed really well. It always was uh, fantastically designed mm-hmm. games. You know, especially in this one and. I think in, in, there's two types of modes. There's casual, and then there's uh, like a, a competitive mode. When the competitive mode, you know, has fi- friendly fire on and things right. like that. Uh, but it's it's 50 percent 
experience for kills. So killing people is not the way to advance in this game, and they, they sort of use that to sort of push people toward hold, you know, going for the objectives or you know, defending their objectives. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I kind of, it's, it's Counter-Strike, and I still love it. There's a, a really huge nostalgia factor, at least for me. Yeah. Uh, the first time I heard, you know, the bomb has been planted in that same voice I've been hearing for 10 years, it just, it, it, <laughs> it, it spurred something within me. It's like, it's hearing that AOL, you've got male voice. You know, oh, there's God. something, there's something at the core of your being that's, that's very temporal that, that, that awakens what you hear. It's like, oh, oh wow, I, I remember that. And, you know, and the fact that the gameplay kind of holds up is, is really fun too. I, I, I do... One thing that that does concern me, and maybe concern is, is a strong word, but the one thing that did a really spurred on the life of Counter Strike beyond the fact that it, it's a really it's a, it's a it's a very polished game, it's a great experience, it's it's simple for people to get into, um, is that for the PC, you know, the dedicated servers were a big thing. People have been able to run the game on their own servers and run their own mutations. Yeah. Um, for an example, like. One thing that got me back into Counter Strike after not playing it for a long time, you know, a bunch of years ago, was I got into a server that they did. Uh, I think Matrix Mondays, where they had this mutation on the server where the gravity was like like twenty percent for all objects. <laughs> so someone would throw a grenade, and the filing cabinets would like in like 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 slowly fly through the air, but everyone else is moving in real time. So then you could use these flying file like file cases as like a form of cover. You you know, it was really kind of neat. It, it made like, uh, particularly the office map, like a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. And the awesome. fact that, you, yeah, and the fact that you can't really do that here, uh, because it's you know it's it's 360, you know, and they're not going the dice route where you can rent servers. Um, it, it makes me think that you know it a little bit of that life is is going to be lost. Maybe they'll go in that direction. They'll add in more mutations. But I'm kind of surprised they don't have a lot of. Uh, different variables you can kind of mess with unless I'm totally missing them and they're in a menu option somewhere that I didn't see I didn't you know this is see any um but, this is pretty much straight laced counter strike oh it, it's very very vanilla um but I, I had heard mentioned that I'm not, I don't know if this is true or not but they I mean it's it's valve they're going to support the modding community and already counter strike shipped with uh models for zombies Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> so they just they well, just anticipated that they're like, you know what? We're just gonna put models for zombies in the game. We know we know that because zombies have to be in everything. Exactly. We're just gonna throw them in there, so we mod as well. Right. You know, and uh, then yeah. probably a few hats. A I don't know if this, is, this well. is true or not. I like, I probably should have fact checked this before I looked on there. But if it is, I am not surprised. And I really I can see the uh, again because this is was a, such a strongly uh, PC based community. The PC version of Counter Strike Go be getting a lot of love from the uh, the community. Especially right. with think, the uh, Steam Workshop now, and the the mm -hmm. just how easy it is to grab shit off of there. Oh yeah, I mean th this is the interesting thing, and I'm, I'm I'm anxious to kind of see how this sort of plays out because you know Team Fortress Two in the orange box never really took off on the consoles. No, you know it never it never really got the support from Valve. Um, people just didn't really take to it. Whereas Team Fortress Two on the PC, of course, is is uh, you know, a huge, huge hit and probably will be for many years to come. So I'm anxious to see how sort of Counter-Strike Go on the consoles plays out. You know, is it going to get that support from Valve? Is it going to get that modding support from Valve? You know, are people really going to take to it and stick to it, you know, uh, unlike unlike the Team Fortress 2? So I don't know. We'll see. I, for me, I, I kind of... It's going to be a game I'm going to play here and there and just, uh, all right, I'll just get a few rounds of Counter-Strike in while I'm sitting on my couch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I haven't been a PC gamer in a real long time, because first of all, my PC kind of kind of sucks, and second of all, like I, I've really gotten used to the the comfort of sort of gaming in my living room with a 5.1 surround sound, and 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 my my computer has become sort of a work area for me. So it's 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 hard for me to get into that comfort gaming zone when I'm sitting at my like my work desk. Yeah, I can you know? totally totally get into that. It's yeah, it's the whole spatial recognition of like wherever you're going to be. You know, if I'm in this room, I'm working. If I'm sitting at my desk, I feel like I should be working. If I'm not working, I feel like I should be working. But if I'm in my living room on my couch, hey, you know, that's that's actually that's relaxed time. Yeah, yeah. But I mean I think I think ultimately, you know, this version of, of Counter Strike on the consoles is gonna pull a lot more people in and I think it's 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 Valve trying to push some 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 lifeblood in this series on the consoles. And I think I think it's gonna work. Yeah, so I think, it just, I think... it's really it's really all in their hands. If they did it, like, I can't see um, people just straight up allowing uh, modding on the console, but I can see Valve grabbing the most popular mods and porting them to the console. Mm -hmm. 
Like that yeah, would be a, think... a way that they could get around a whole the Microsoft certification process if they just were like, all right, you know what, we're going to officially support these mods because people like them and they're very popular, and we're just going to port them to the console. We're going to push it through the the approval process and get it on there. But I can't mm -hmm. see the other way, you know, where it's just people are making their own shit and putting it on the console because I mean, how the fuck are you going to do that? It's you can't really do that. No, yeah, <laughs> not, not unless you have a dev kit, and that's not I've... no no. That's sort of an impossibility. Yeah. So. I, I just a, a quick funny aside. I, I was playing today, and I was the only person left, and I was holed up with the hostages, and I had uh, um, a Molotov cocktail, and I, 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 I hear them. I, I can tell they're kind of coming into the bottom. I, I was playing on uh, on Italy, so I can tell they were kind of coming into the bottom of the building. I was on the second floor, so I throw the Molotov and I try to get it down the stairs onto the first floor, and of course it hits the top banister <laughs> and just explodes and fire fills the room and kills the two hostages and kills me I, and you know of course it's like you know counter terrorist win and some guy in xbox live was just like fucking moron <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because they everyone everyone's watching you if you're like, oh yeah oh. yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i was the i was i would i admit i was the fucking moron today that's that's so. wonderful yeah uh so anyway are you gonna be playing a lot more of it do you think i don't know the thing is like i it's not very dynamic like there's mm -hmm. not much there. There's mm -hmm. like you know there's a couple maps, but there's only a handful of gameplay modes, and you it's very repetitive, incredibly repetitive. Yeah, and it sometimes these matches, it's like like best out of fifteen. <laughs> no, 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 no. The casual is best out of ten. The uh, the I don't want to call it. Well, it's not hardcore. It's a it's competitive. It's competitive competitive yeah. is best out of thirty. Best out of thirty. That's yeah. a lot of rounds. That's a lot oh. of rounds. That's a lot of rounds. It's the same map over and over yeah, same again. Same map over and over again. And I found myself getting kind of bored of it after like a couple hours. And I was just like, great. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to do a different gameplay type, or I want to do a different map. I mean, there's really not that much. Yeah, you have to understand there are people that really get into the nitty gritty of the competitive nature of Counter Strike, yeah, yeah. and the design of the game is sort of supports that. I mean, there's little little additions, whereas you know, so on the top of your screen you see the icons of your teammates. Yep. The, there's a little bar on those icons that show their health. Mm, I didn't, you know. That. Yeah, so if you're throwing orders to your teammates, you know, you know, if you have one guy who has a little bit of health, but you need to go out and find some straggling Counter Strike person. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, on the other team, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm not going to send my guy with two health over there. Like, you stay and you you, you try to you know, guard the hostages and have somebody else go after yeah. them. So yeah. there's little touches like that that I think people, when they really get deep in the weeds for Counter Strike, they they'll appreciate. What I found interesting is I didn't notice there being any the typical you know Call of Duty uh, character progression in this game. Uh no there there isn't there is no XP system no. there they have a medal system based upon if you get awards for diff doing different things in matches um and you know, the awards are, are very not random but they're uh, they're things like you know getting a number of kills mm -hmm. getting earning a certain amount of money and there's tons of them and there's so there's, there's that type of medal system but there's no XP there's no progression there's no skill set i mean there wouldn't be anyway but no, i mean like it, perks it's, or anything like that yeah counter strike is all about everyone being equally yeah. equipped yeah, that, I, I really like that because it's not like I'm going to go into a game and then automatically be uh, have a have that a uh, or well, I can't even think. I, I tried to think of this word earlier today. I just brain farted. Uh, I get a kind of, yeah, disadvantage or a penalty uh, based just on the fact that I haven't played as much as other people. Right. And it's not right. like whether the skill it's it's like even if we're equal skill, just because someone played more than me, they have the advantage over me. Just right. because they have yeah. these perks and these levels on me. Yeah, I mean, everyone starts out with, I think, a thousand dollars and a pistol. Everybody <laughs> starts. Everybody starts. You know, exactly at the same same uh, same set, yeah. you know, same point every round. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's, 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 no, no, it's it's every match it resets. Uh, correct. Yeah, because yeah. you get so, I mean, money at the each end of rounds. Right. So it's it's pretty much a a, a skill based game, which yeah. I like. Which was one thing I really like about it. You know. So yeah, they, but anyway, barrier to entry but, is pretty low. Oh it, well, it's extremely low, and I think that's one of the things that that had Counter Strike made made Counter Strike catch on so so fervently. You know, from the very beginning, is anyone can just pick it up and, and play it. Yeah, you know, I, the I objectives see, like, are not difficult. Oh man, like I'm starting to think of like what if they started doing crazy uh, like Rainbow Six Rogue Spear type maps in uh, mm -hmm. in Counter Strike because those were those were some of the most interesting parts of the uh, the Rogue Spear. Um, that gameplay is, is like, all right, well, what if we have hostages or what if we're trying to, you know, rescue hostages off of a plane? 
that's right, been you right. know, that's on an on an airfield, mm-hmm. or you know doing right. these kind of crazy crazy scenarios like all right now we have to rescue these hostages on a, a stage in a theater, mm-hmm. and like that yeah. those were those were the two maps that really stuck out to me and uh is it Rainbow Six Rockspear is that right? Uh, I believe so yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, like those kind of uh, scenarios, like where it's much more interesting, more dynamic, and that you know, like the the environments are really what's the interesting thing. Uh, and yeah, yeah it's maybe it's just I just don't know the maps well enough in the in in Counter Strike, but they seem very um, plain to me. It might be uh, they're the same maps that we had ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are they are the same maps. Yeah, I, I think I, I I can I can navigate through dust in my sleep. Yeah, and know? that's but, we've had how many a decade of uh, of progress in level design. <laughs> but I think I think I think those levels though they still hold up. I mean, yeah. I, I think they brought a lot of things to the table that's that. that Modern map ba- map making still still use. Yeah, you know? I, there, there's, there's multiple pathways, but not too many. You know, you can still guard your lanes with three or four people if you need to. Right. You know, yeah, it's, it's... and that that brings up one difference between the PC version and uh, well, the uh, the console version here that I'm I'm kind of disappointed in is that I'm not sure how it is on the PC, and you could let me know, but on on the console version, it's only five or six people per team. Oh no no it. no! We had a lot of people on our, our matches for um. For PC, I think we might have been even up to ten per team. So yeah, it's only five. I think it's five people per team, which is pretty sure we were. Oh no, we were up. Holy shit, we were. I think we were up to like. Oh no, it might have been only about ten. I I was thinking Uh, maybe we might have been up to (laughs) fifteen. Because I remember there were icons. There's like it was like fucking fifty dudes. (laughs) But yeah, I I remember being you know playing playing Office in a full server with lots of people and those hallways just being carnage ridden. Yeah, you know, I think without, the, the, with the PC it goes up to maybe twenty people total. Yeah, because now yeah. I'm thinking so, that there's rows of icons on the top, and I think it was uh, two rows on for each team, and each row consisted of five people for one. Yeah, team. that makes that makes sense. I, I've only seen five per team on 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 the console. Yeah, so. on, on PC there's it goes up all the way up to ten, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that's one thing I'm sort of disappointed in. Um, one of the things that Counter Strike actually does does really well is is the bots are, are actually fantastic. I mean, a lot of times. <laughs> oh God, I'm laughing at this because the bots are fucking terrible. Really? On the PC? I, I, really? Wow. On, on the gun on the console, they they were pretty good. I mean, I was because bots will fill out a team if you have enough people. And yeah, no, these were the these bots were not easy. Like this, the, the thing is like you know the map that's kind of a a, a factory. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was, I was able to reproduce this multiple times by just uh, starting the game on easy and then going on the right side all the way along that fence. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go down that right side, like, almost half the time, all the enemy team, as a, as the uh, as the terrorists, you go down that side, and the, the counter-terrorists, um, uh, they will all stand on each other. Oh, really? Like, on the, around, just, like, just... Just right around a corner, they just stand in a pile, and you can easily just stand there and shoot them. They won't move. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. So I was able to kill all of them in one go. God. Yeah, I, they must have been put on easy. At least on the, con- you know, here's the thing. Maybe console players are just so bad that they made the bots seem so much better. This is the this is the <laughs> default difficulty they have set for the bots, though. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm not sure if that's adjustable. You can change it. Oh, you on, can. On the okay. PC, you can. It actually you probably set up true. Yeah, if you possible. go into training mode, you can actually you set what the uh, the bots are set at, and it's for, oh, well, yeah. by default it's you know like easy or something. Right, right. Okay, yeah, I did play with bots just at the beginning, sort of to get my yeah. see if I could wet my whistle a bit and, and practice my old C, you know, Counter Strike chops before I went into an online game. So, but you know, honestly, I the, my big takeaway from this is that the life of this game, at least on the console, is really going to depend upon how much support Valve gives it. Yeah. And if they let it languish, sort of like they allowed Team Fortress 2 to languish on the orange box, you know, it's it's not going to have a, a real long tail. Uh, but if they give it love, it, it can it can go somewhere. And, and, and love meaning, you know, it's going to need mods, it's going to need more maps, it's going to need events, it's going to be important to get people playing. Because once you really, once Counter-Strike kind of gets your claws into you, um, it, it really it really sticks yeah. because gameplay is pretty purely distilled down to a a a, a skill level, you know, and it's 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 simplistic nature is what kind of draws you in, right? You know, 
So you see, and, you know, uh, I, I tell you what, more, more people were using headsets on Counter Strike in the past two days than I've ever seen in open world servers on Battlefield Three. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's it's the trash talk, but honestly, it's the nature people, of the game. People do seem dedicated. Yeah. So well, when it, I say uh, open servers, I mean I mean public servers on, on Battlefield Three. When people own servers, they're a little they clamp down a little more on that. Is it a download game on on 360? Is it on XBLA? It's on XBLA. Yeah. Okay, that might actually I can see. Was uh, Team Fortress Two a download? Uh, or was it just I an orange box? I don't know. I think it might have just been orange box, which would be a huge mistake for Valve yeah. to not just make Team Fortress Two a downloadable title. Well, that's on the that thing. XBLA. Is like I'm wondering like if if that was one of the major reasons why they never put too much support in it because it it's, was part of a bundle instead of being individual like anybody could pick yep. it up like i can see it was see a 60 dollar 60 dollar entrance fee is a lot more than yeah absolutely bucks. like if it's if it's a 15 dollar downloadable title on the xbla if they support it more more and more people are actually going to end up picking it up yeah and I, if i'm not mistaken orange box came out a long time after half-life 2 came out on the pc and anyone who was going to but play half-life 2 had already played it on the pc yeah. i mean half-life the original Half-Life and Half-Life 2 were games you built a PC to play, you know. I think Orange, Blo- Orange Box contained Episode 1. I think it was, was it, was it 1 that it launched with, or was it 2? It was Episode 1 and 2 and Portal and Team Fortress 2. Right, because it was, it was the launch for Episode 2 was what the Orange Box right. was. Right, right. So it had a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? So so that's that's a factor too. But you know, like I said, it's it. I'll be playing this again. I'll be jumping on Counter Strike matches every once in a while, and hopefully they give it some love. And you know, yeah, it'll be interesting life. to see how it goes and, and check back in like another month, six months to a year, and see how uh, how it's evolved. Yeah, we should, we'll do another auto, auto impression. Counter Strike <laughs> Global Offensive a year later retrospective. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Good work. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for uh, listening. It's been Audible Impressions for Counter-Strike Go. Check us out at fourplayerpodcast.com, and we'll see you later. See ya.